funny that it's uh, that it's S and implied testing positive or oh. something, isn't it? <laughs> Pull your finger out of your ass. Jeez. This is my first ever football jumper. My three goat votes, I should say. My three goats. My three votes <laughs> for three Charlie. Votes. For Char oh, top of the world, <laughs> mate. What a time to be alive. I look a bit like Nick Bellick from uh, GTA 4, I feel, with this. That could, that could get dangerous. All right, Pressure Point fans, we've got another very special guest on the on the show tonight. We've got 2016 Most medalist. We've also got the number one draft pick from 2016 AFL Women's Draft, and she's played 30 games for the GWS Giants. Her name is Nicola Barr. Nick, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. 30 games doesn't doesn't sound like much. I'm really realizing how much I've been injured now. <laughs> it's a really bad bad reflection point, but yeah. Well, it's 30 more games than the two of us combined, so it's definitely um, <laughs> nothing to be shunned, that's for sure. And I'll start with an easy question. We ask all our guests this with the weird year that we've had. How's life been um, for you through that, throughout the pandemic? Obviously, you're in Sydney, we're in Melbourne, so it's been a little bit of a different experience for you, but what's it been like for you? Yeah, it's um, it's been interesting. I got really lucky and did quite a big overseas trip in 2019, so... Um, I guess I actually feel pretty lucky that I got a, a fair bit of travel in in that year before COVID hit pretty hard in Australia. So um, I think I, I came back and, and wanted to start working and, and focus on my footy. So from that perspective, obviously, footy has been pretty interrupted with COVID in terms of, you know, crazy hubs with AFLW and, um, you know, shortened seasons and all that kind of stuff. But you know, I've, I've moved very close to the beach, so I really can't complain. I'm, I'm very lucky compared to a lot of people. Oh, that's really good. And I mean, yeah, makes us jealous that that sort of lifestyle. <laughs> but, um, now we're coming out of it at the, at the time of recording, so it is exciting for us too down here. Um, yeah. But let's talk footy. That's what we've got you here for. And um, let's let's wind it back to the start and you know, your, your early days and how you sort of where your interest for footy came in and, and how you sort of um, yeah, got into the system and, and ended up getting drafted into the AFL women's comp? Yeah, I, I grew up overseas. And so for me, sport was always a way to connect with lots of different people and, and learn new skills. And I think I always use sport as a way to, yeah, feel a sense of belonging, I guess, wherever I was moving. Um, we moved back to Australia in, oh, I don't actually know what year, I was 14. Um, can't do the maths that quickly at this time of night, but um, moved back to Australia and we moved to Sydney and I was from Melbourne. So moving to Sydney was a bit of a, a shock for me, particularly at the age of 14. And again, you know, like I had elsewhere, played a lot of different sports, um, met lots of people. And then when I was in year 11 at school, our director of sport at the time asked a bunch of people who played, you know, a lot of different sport and, either coordinated or fit or combination whatever he said do you want to give AFL a go and I'd never really played AFL I'd always been a big big soccer fan loved a bit of netball volleyball whatever you want um started playing footy and I guess from there just loved football because it combined so many different skills from different sports that I'd grown up playing and I loved the running element of it as well and I suppose I probably loved running too um just like I guess from growing up doing cross country and that kind of thing so um I guess for me AFL was yeah that that sport that got to combine all of those different skills yeah absolutely and I, and I think growing up in Sydney well being, being being from Sydney as well in such a rugby league dominated city compared to here it, it mm -hmm. is hard to sort of I mean get attracted to the sport from from um from that city compared to here where it's just in your face so mm. to, to mm. from from a, a city like sydney is, is a great effort and um i guess you know, your next part of your career you know making getting drafted and then debuting as well what was that experience like um obviously you remember your first game and and uh mm. your first kick first goal how did all that all that go down for you well, don't, don't say first goal because this is very embarrassing. I have not kicked one yet. And this is going to be the year, I tell you. It's going to be the year. But um, no, getting drafted, I mean, back in 2016, I was, I think, I still felt like I was very new to the sport, to be honest. I'd only started playing it two years or so ago. So for me, it all still felt pretty new and um, yeah, pretty surreal. And also, like you mentioned, I was from Sydney, so wasn't used to the hype that was around AFL in Melbourne. So I remember flying down, my mum came with me to Melbourne and 
um, I think that the, the draft was at the NAB headquarters, um, went in and it was all, yeah, very surreal. Everyone was excited. Um, and then, yeah, I guess after my name got called out, it was like a, a huge flurry of media, which I probably wasn't, I've never had that before and wasn't really expecting, um, I guess. But yeah, I, I was very lucky to have some good people around me and a couple of the girls that had already been sort of signed to the Giants as marquee players were like super supportive and, um, you know, they're there to help out and whatnot. So pretty crazy day. And then our first game was against Adelaide, in Adelaide. Um, and I remember it just being like so, so exciting. Absolutely loved it. Um, we didn't we didn't come away with the win, but yeah, it, it felt pretty exciting to just be part of that first year. I can only imagine what that would be like. I know Marcus and I have both sort of dreamt our whole lives of experiencing something like that. So very jealous that you've been able to go through those experiences. Um, one particular thing that's different from AFLW to the AFL is the fact that at the moment, AFLW is part-time. It's only for a certain part of the year. What is that like as a part-time athlete? It must be difficult trying to juggle a full-time job and football or uni, whatever you're up to these days. Yeah, I guess the tough thing with AFLW being part-time is that you're very much expected to be playing in a very elite level. Um, and I always like to think you can't really be a part-time athlete. It's not like another part-time job where once you leave work, you can sort of really switch off because there's, there's so many things that go into being an elite athlete. You know, there's not just the training, but there's also recovery. There's watching vision. There's having player team meetings, having, you know, extra sessions, all that kind of stuff um, is, is quite challenging to fit in when it is part-time and, and most of us are either, you know, working or, or studying alongside that. We don't have all day, every day dedicated to football. So it can be challenging at times, that's for sure. I think it's going to be interesting to see what the next few years look like in terms of the hours and, and the commitment that AFLW is going to have. It's definitely increased since I started playing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what that balance is going to be like. Yeah, I think it'll be a difficult juggle for sure. I know the season's obviously starting earlier this year and hopefully, I mean, mm. from, from a fan's perspective anyway, it'll go longer and longer. I'm sure you're thinking the same thing. The longer the season, the better. Um, mm. Here at the podcast, we do love first. So it's great because you're our first AFLW player to come on. You're our first connection with the Giants. And a little fact for people that don't know, you're also the first AFLW player to be sent directly to the tribunal from an on-field incident. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be something that you were super... That always t- comes up. That always, <laughs> always comes gets, up. We, we had to bring it up. We had to bring it up. Obviously, it's... Um, I don't know, obviously not something, you know, you look back on and think, oh, that was fantastic. But what was, what is that experience <laughs> like going straight to the tribunal? Is, is it pretty nervy or do you sort of understand what's going to happen and before you head in? Um, to be honest, I, I completely didn't expect to be sent to the tribunal. I, you know, obviously I felt terrible. I'd, I'd injured Ash Riddell from North Melbourne. Um, and actually funny story, we happened to be in a Pilates teaching course a year later with each other um and she's awesome Ash I really really like her but you know it was definitely an accident on on my behalf um and after the game you know the you know my coach has sort of been like oh it was great to see you like so sort of aggressive in the game because I'm not really known for my aggression on the field I'm more of a of a running player um trying to work on that but yeah no I felt really awful obviously that Ash was injured and then she had quite a serious injury. Um, I was a little bit nervous going into, into that tribunal, but you know, it's all a learning experience, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you're probably going to go on a, on a lot of trivia questions in, you know, 50 to hundred years time is that <laughs> who was the first player to AFLW player to be sent to the tribunal. So you, you've at least got that. Not, not that, something yeah. I really want to hold to my name, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, that's great. Um, well, you you also play with a, a couple of Irish girls as well. So um, I know a lot, of the, a lot of the Irish Irish boys that play, you know, that transition from, you know, a completely different side of the world and a different sport over to the AFL. What's it like, um, you know, mentoring these girls and, um, you yeah, know, getting that, helping them with that transition into a, you know, a sport that's you know, very hard to pick up if you're, you're not used to it? Well, it's funny you say, how do I mentor them? They're definitely mentoring me. Cora and Stacky are the toughest people I know in fact the other day my our coach Alan I think compared me to to being 
in terms of our mental toughness on in game day, he said he was like, "Well, you're not core in it," and I was like, "Well, no, I'm not," because she's a nut case. Um, but yeah, no, those girls bring a lot of experience in, in elite and high performing sport to us. So I actually think that they bring a really exciting element to our team as well, which is really really cool to learn from them and just to have another perspective as well. I think is really important. Um, core has obviously been playing for a while now with us so she's definitely you know I don't like to make fun of her kick too much but she's still, she's still kicking around the body a little bit but um <laughs> she's obviously a very influential player for us um poor Stucky obviously had a terrible injury um last year in a preseason match so unfortunately missed the season um and I think as well just given how last season went with the hub and moving around and everything like that it was probably really I mean I can't even imagine how challenging it was for her last year. She was never able to sort of settle in Sydney and, and really enjoy um, Sydney lifestyle and get settled in at the club. So I, I'm really looking forward to Stacky being back this year. And, you know, she's going to be an absolute jet. She's she's similar to Cora in terms of just absolutely goes for everything. So I can't wait to see how she goes. Yeah, no, we're both pretty excited to see her at full flight as well. It was obviously disappointing last year to see her out through injury. Um, but speaking of Irish girls, you've and you've been over to Europe and done some coaching over there, I know, with the AFO Europe system over there. What was all that like? Obviously, um, probably, you know, ideally living a bit of a dream there, going and coaching footy over in Europe, one of the, you know, nicest continents in the world. What was that like? Oh, it was an unreal experience. It was sort of, um, at the time, I wanted to go, I, I finished uni, and I was pretty keen to travel. I've always loved traveling and I wanted to get overseas and just, you know, do a bit of a. Um, someone at the club actually um, introduced me to the chairman of AFL Europe at the time. And we caught up for a coffee and he was like, I think it'd be good if you did some stuff. And I was like, nah, I don't want to. I just want to go over and travel. And, you know, I was like, I just want to be a hippie for a bit. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, um, Betty, he was like, come on, just like, just do this. It'll be really good. You can still, you know, jump around and whatnot. And, I honestly am so glad I took the opportunity because it was the best experience of my life. I basically went over and wherever I was at the time, if there was an AFL team there, would sort of get in contact with them and try and organise to get along to a training session. Um, I'd go along to training and, and we'd really just like have a kick, which was awesome because it also meant that I was, you know, still keeping up a little bit of footy skills, which was um, important, particularly, you know, when you're travelling around Europe um and that was great and then after the trainings you know we'd go to a local pub and it was just a really really different experience I think um compared to if I hadn't said yes because you meet all the locals you get to know all the really cool local things and um it was also awesome just to see how passionate these players were about AFL in somewhere completely foreign um, I particularly loved the teams who didn't really speak a lot of English. I can remember my like Croat coaching in Croatia and the training session, everyone was just speaking Croatian. And of course I had no idea what they were talking about, um, but it was just, it was really, really cool. So I'm disappointed that COVID sort of meant I haven't been able to get back over. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that again. Did you find there were many Australians over there or was it mostly just locals that had picked up the game and absolutely fell in love with it? Or were there some Australians sort of pushing the love a little bit? Uh, it totally depended where I was. If, if I was in the UK, obviously there's quite a large um, number of Australians over in the UK and, and also in Ireland. Oh, actually, probably not in Ireland as much. I didn't get to Ireland, so I, I'm not sure. But in the UK... Um, in Scotland and in London were the two main areas that I went to see teams over there. There was quite a number of Australians, but elsewhere there was probably maybe like one Australian who had started the team or started the club and then the locals would jump on board. And, you know, we all know that we, we love AFL because it's such a great game to watch and it's so much fun to play. Of course, people are going to love it overseas as well. So it was, it was awesome to see. Look, it might be a biased opinion from our point of view, but it's definitely the best game in the world. So props to you for going over and spreading it and teaching everybody how to play it properly. Bringing it back to Australia now, you also do a little bit of media work on the side. I know you've done some boundary writing with Fox Footy, you do a bit with GWS Media, et cetera. How did you find yourself getting into the media side of things and how are you enjoying that? 
Yeah, I'm, I have really enjoyed that recently. I think um, it definitely wasn't something I was pushing necessarily. It just sort of, it just sort of happened. Um, I think from from memory. Um, but I, I really love, I really love the media side of things. I always just think it's a really fun kind of thing to do, and um, it's also uh, something that's come up as a result of playing. And you know, not not everyone has opportunities. I really love that stuff, but, you know, still still learning along the way and um, making plenty of mistakes as I go, but have definitely been enjoying the commentary side of things as well. And particularly last year, I was injured for the back half of the season. And whilst that was really, really challenging, I guess, for me not being able to play, you know, you always have to try and look at the positives and, and look at what you can do. And for me, that opportunity was was doing a bit of boundary stuff last year for Fox Footy. So whilst I hope I'm I'm not injured for this season, um, you know, it's it, it was always good to do that too. Yeah, we obviously don't want you getting injured, but if we do, we know you'll be doing <laughs> keep yourself busy. Did you find you took a different perspective from commentating from the boundary line compared to when you're playing? Do you start picking things up that you might not have noticed as a player? Um, yeah, definitely. I think you always do, and I actually really loved I loved it because you actually watched the other team a little bit more like obviously during the week if we're playing a particular team you'll analyze their football and the players and, and all that kind of stuff but I guess trying to watch it from more of a neutral perspective is always interesting mind you it's pretty tough to commentate when you are commentating for your team playing <laughs> I'm probably a little bit biased but I'm working on that skill I've got to learn I think with this podcast, we're very, both very biased with our club, yeah. so I don't blame me whatsoever. <laughs> Who are your clubs, by the way? I didn't know. Uh, I'm Richmond and Carlton. <sighs> yeah, so uh, I've known the clubs. I'd known I would have jumped on. <laughs> that's why we. That's why we keep it a secret. We don't tell anybody until <laughs> you run, so it's too late. Um, and another initiative you've been a part of, which is pretty recent, is the uh, AFL Players for Climate Change, and I've seen that's mm-hmm. been um, pumping up, and a few players have jumped on board. What's all that about for those that aren't quite aware? I mean, it's probably common sense with the name, but uh, tell us what that's about. Yeah, the AFL Players for Climate Action Group was started by Jasper Pittard um, and also Tom Campbell. Obviously, Jasper is now a retired AFL player. Tom's um, with North Melbourne. And they basically wanted to come up with a group, I guess, essentially to do more to tackle climate change. So it's a group of about 260 AFL and AFL W players who really, I guess, want to try and use their profile as an athlete to promote, I guess, an influence, a positive message about climate change and, I guess, try and encourage more action um, from from just the community and, and also potentially the government as well. I think that it's obviously as athletes, we're not climate scientists and we're not looking to, you know, talk about data and, and all that really specific stuff. But I think particularly in Australia, people really look up to athletes as role models and, um, you know, really listen to what athletes have to say. So I think if we can spread a positive message about trying to raise awareness of climate action and, and try and encourage positive, you know, positive moves from that, then I think that's, that's going to, that's really, I guess, what the goal of the group is. Yeah, I think using the platform that you've got to spread such a positive message is always a good thing. And I know you could use it for a lot, a lot worse things. So you've done, we've done a great job there. Um, we'll get into the off-season side of things. Obviously, like I said, it's not a full-time gig, but I know you do a little bit um, in terms of fitness on the off uh, off-season. You like to keep fit, and with your triathlon, cycling, surfing, etc. Are you just a natural fitness fanatic, or does that just come with the AFL side of things? How did that all start? Oh no, I think I've just I've always loved adventure. I think it's one of my main values is just getting outside and um, challenging myself physically, but also just being in nature as much as I can be is something I've always love to do um and I, I in terms of the cycling stuff I always grew up cycling we did a lot of family trips cycling when I was younger as well overseas and so that's sort of always been I guess part of my life and that's why I like doing it now and I live close to the beach and I love just getting in the water every day as much as as much as I can so um no it's probably less so to do with being a fitness freak rather than I guess as opposed to just loving being outside yeah, love that, um, and I'm sure it's keeping you keeping you nice and fit ahead of uh, next season as well. How how is all that tracking? Um, you know, preseason was got on just got underway not too long ago, and season starts um, in a couple of months or two three months. So how, yeah. how are you tracking, and um, how are how are the girls feeling ahead of um, season 2022? 
Yeah, well, obviously in Sydney, we had a pretty hefty lockdown for about four months. Um, I feel silly saying that to Victorians having been in and out of lockdown. I think you're the most, is it, aren't you the most lockdown city in the world? Um, <laughs> bringing that back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, but no, it's, yeah, obviously a bit, it was a bit challenging with that lockdown, um, not being able to train sort of as a whole group and having a few restrictions on that. Um, so sort of needed to be a little bit more creative during the back end of the off season. And normally we will play club or well, not all of us, but um, a lot of us play club football in the off season and that was canceled as well. So unfortunately, yeah, didn't, didn't get a whole bunch of club football in, which I personally was hoping to. And I know a lot of the girls really love doing that as well, but I think, you know, we've really started ramping up now. And, and from what I feel at the moment, I think we're in a really good spot. We do have quite a different list at the giants compared to last year. Um, a few, I guess, you know, pretty key players or who were pretty key players for us, Jess Dalpos and Elle Bennett's have now gone back to Victoria, which is, is where they're originally from. Um, but, you know, we've had some really, really great, we had a pretty good trade period. We've got Chloe Dalton, also got Katie Loins in the team now as well, as well as Jazz Grierson. And we've also picked up some really enthusiastic girls that I think, um, you know, they bring a sense of, well, obviously they bring a sense like a lot of youthfulness, which is, you know, always nice. But um, I think as well, they seem to just really, really be quite confident in their ability and not in an arrogant way. They're just really eager to learn. And, you know, the last thing we want is for young players to get on the field and feel nervous and not back themselves in. And I don't think that that's what these young girls are doing. Um, so I'm really excited to see, you know, the likes of Jess Doyle, Georgie Fowler um, and the other young girls, you know, really get going this season. Yeah, you touched on the young girls and some youthfulness that you have throughout the club, Ben. You're only 25, so in you know, in, in retrospect, it's still pretty young. Same age as me. What's it like <laughs> being a bit of a mentor to some of these younger girls at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're right. I am 25. I think I'm starting to feel like a veteran in AFLW because I've been there since the start. But um, it is really lovely coming into the club and, and seeing the young girls just be like so excited to be there and to be training um I know you know it's just they just bring great banter and it almost reminds you how much you love football and and why you love football I guess um I think it also really takes you out of your own game as well and I don't mean in a negative way but it I guess having a focus on other players um and having a focus on helping them to get better it, it makes you better as well and I know I'm really starting to enjoy that aspect of it as well now that I'm a little bit older in the team and yeah I just just love the young girls I think they're absolutely killing it and they're loving it too so it's great to see I love that love that it sounds like it's an exciting time at the Giants for for the next season so um hopefully we can see you guys lifting up the cup um in a few months time that'll be that'd be good to see um that's, plan. that's it all right. Well, just before we wrap up, we we do a segment called the Pressure Cooker, where we'll ask you a quick, uh, a few quick fire questions. Um, nothing too serious and nothing to panic about. I hope not. <laughs> no, no more tribunal questions. Yeah, I yeah, no. yeah. I was going to no, say no, you got that no. one out of the way. You can't that up again. <laughs> All righty. I'll I'll kick us off. Uh, who was the best player you've played with or against? Well. Yeah. yeah, nice one. And what's the favourite game you've played in so far? Well, Blacktown in our first year against the D's. It was pouring with rain and it was the first game we won. All right, you've got me there. Um, but, yeah, no, loved watching Tani Evans last year. Just she's going to be a gun. Um, she's very young and she's got a lot of talent and she's on the wing, which is, is my position as well. So love playing, love playing out there with her. No, absolutely agree. And then the last one we've got, obviously you came into football a little bit later, but which team did you support before being drafted to the Giants? I, I've got two answers. It was originally St Kilda, but that was kind of like, oh, mum and dad were from Melbourne and we were overseas. It's like, oh, we go for St Kilda, so I didn't really watch. And then I moved to Sydney and so it was the Swans, but I'm not sure if I'm really meant to say that. 
having you know playing for the Giants at the moment. But yeah, if you're my honest answer, I I I did barrack for this one. It's right. Before you got drafted, there's no hard feeling. <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, that that's pretty much it for for the episode. We um really appreciate you coming on and and giving up your time to to have a chat with us. We really appreciate it and. Uh, all the best for for next season and, and the pre-season coming up. And yeah, hope as I said before, hope you guys can uh, win the premiership next year. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.